So I think I've only done three episodes in a video uh, twice. And the first time was the Nami uh, Arlong Park episodes. And the second time was the uh, Grand Lion, the start of the Grand Lion episodes. And that was because I had a little bit to come off of jumping into like that was kind of like two and a half episodes or more two and three quarters episodes but i was like coming off filler episodes i had half an episode to watch i had extra scenes to watch and i had the two episodes that normally so i kind of only do it on special occasions because the nami episodes people told me like hey these three episodes are really best watched together so you should probably try to get them together if you can um so the question is why am i doing these episodes 78 79 and 80 together um because i wanna <laughs> I have extra time today and I thought it seems like a nice little uh, a nice little bout of extra content for you guys if I uh, put in an extra episode into this video um, so I hope you enjoy it if you do like this please make sure to again let me know in the comments that you liked it um, support the video all that stuff I mean I love reading your comments so keep commenting keep commenting all your, your little you know, your little comments about everything that's going on in the series and my reactions and all that sort of stuff. I love reading that. Um, and, but anyway, we're going to be watching three episodes today. Uh, yeah, we've just left Little Garden. I thought this was also a good time to do three episodes because I want to, if we're going into a new arc, then I want to like get, you know, get deeper into the arc so I can sort of see what they're setting up. If we're going into... Um, like if this is like setup episodes for an arc, then maybe I'll get past the setup episodes and into the new arc. Like I, I kind of want to take the next step. So I'm giving myself a decent amount of time to be able to take that next step. So I'm excited for this because Little Garden was a lot of fun, but it's always, it's always really interesting when you're making your way into a new section of the show. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to be jumping into these episodes. Um, please, please, please. If you do want to watch these three episodes uh, on with me full length, you can do that on my Patreon account, as well as getting the next at least four episodes on my Patreon account right now. It's super worth it. Super, super worth it. Absolutely. So go check out my Patreon if you want to do that. Otherwise, you can just stay here and chill with me and let's uh, talk about the episodes. Anyway, this is going to be episode 78 of One Piece. Let's jump into it right now. Is this going to be a long... This isn't a long enough recap for me to do my Ruby's Cube, I don't think. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, this is, looks like a, you know, 20 second recap. Someone told me in the comments about how that goldfish is like... Uh, Usopp used to tell a story about a goldfish that, you know, pooped islands or whatever, and there actually is one. Crazy. Well done, guys. Well done. Damn, they're weapons! Who's telling this story? Uh-huh. Thanks for the exposition, man. Oh my god, it's it's like Zoro and Sanji. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's classic. <laughs> okay, you know what? Zoro and Sanji's whole thing, I'm gonna say it wasn't useless. Well done. That's great, because the, the bones were there the whole time. That's really nice. I like that. <laughs> Don't fall off the boat. One of you can't swim. I love Vivi. I really like her. 
Amazing how different Vivi is from her, like, you know, her persona, though. Miss Wednesday or whatever. <laughs> Oh, Nami's actually not looking well. God damn, Zoro! Look at ya! Mmm. Wasn't strong enough. Oh my god! Alabaster Kingdom, Sandy Island. Bon Clay Summer? Okay, this is Bon Clay. <laughs> she her pronouns or? Hopefully I'll find out. Oh my god, yeah, no, she's... She's not well. Is it because they were inside of a fish? <laughs> that ain't good. No. <laughs> the one who's out. Yeah, we need a ship doctor. Sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah, I love food, I think, yeah. Damn. Really? N none of those three have been sick? Is it because of the joke of like, oh, stupid people don't get sick, you know? Is that the the joke they're making? Subjected <laughs> <laughs> to the resistance. Oh God. I remember her looking at the paper and being shocked. Yeah. No, you need a doctor, girl. We don't want anything to happen to you. <laughs> what? When did she have time to put her shoes on? Oh my god. That, that is actually very high stakes. <laughs> Some of the highest stakes we've had in this show, I feel like. <laughs> Man. I mean, you'd get even sicker with all the, uh... With all the... Stress. An immense wind. Jeez! <laughs> Everyone's so worried about her. <laughs> yeah, we know. I think they're kind of... They're kind of doing that. Hmm? Mm hmm Yeah. There we go. That's good logic. <laughs> Man, she's looking very sickly. Oh. oh my god! Uh-huh. Wow. 
Oh, that's good to hear. I like... I like that they're showing how she's like an amazing navigator. Not just like a decent one. No. <laughs> Is someone standing on the ocean? What the? Okay. All right. Well, uh, that was a you know a, a nice sort of like. It was a very important episode, I feel like, because, I mean, it, it wrapped up the little garden arc properly by actually answering the question of, like, what the hell they were doing there, which I'd, I'd forgotten that that was even a question, you know? Um, but the, it answered that, and answered it in such a satisfying way, I think. Like, the fact that it was, like, a hunting contest between, uh, between those two warriors, and they, it was basically exactly what... Sanji and uh, Zoro were doing and it's kind of nice to, to see that because like um, Usopp was like looking up to these Giants like physically and figuratively where he was like looking at them and going like wow This is the sort of this is a real man. This is a real like people fighting for their convictions You know the, the these are the epitome of strength and honor, you know he was looking at them and thinking all of that, and we find out at the end that they are the same, basically, as Sanji and Zoro. Like, down to the exact contest that they were having and the exact way they were arguing about it. And that just kind of means that, like, in a way, Usopp is looking up to Sanji and Zoro. I mean, he may not admit that or want to admit it because, uh, because Sanji and Zoro are such, like, a pain in his ass and stuff, but... Like, I think that's that's a nice little sort of uh, way to show that, like, that Sanji and Zoro are the right people for him to be traveling with and will help him aspire to be like that, you know? Obviously, if Sanji and Zoro and Luffy, I suppose, weren't there, um, then perhaps the best thing for Sanji to do, uh, Usopp to do, rather, would have been to stay behind with the warriors, with the Elbaf warriors, so you can learn from them. But since we already have those sorts of people on our ship, he can now explore the world and become like them. I just think it's kind of cool that they had that little parallel in there. Um, and it makes me take back all my criticisms. Like, I mean, I didn't, I, I wouldn't call them massive criticisms. I wasn't like, I wasn't trying to say that the show was being stupid or whatever, but I was like, I was like making comments where I was saying, ah, oh, well, they're just giving Sanji and Zoro something to do while this arc is going on. Um, and like, it did feel almost like it was kind of lazy, you know? Um, just because I think they were, those scenes were inherently less interesting. The ones where they're hunting um, dinosaurs, <laughs> basically. Cause I was like, I don't care about dinosaurs. That's also a thing with me is like, I don't care about creatures as much. If, if uh, the enemy is like a big wolf or something, I don't care. I don't care about that. I want to see them fight other, like, people, smart enemies, like, uh, cre uh, people who have their own thoughts and feelings and motivations and stuff like that. I like watching that sort of stuff. When it's just, like, hunting animals, I don't find it nearly as entertaining. Um, but, uh, and, like, you know, I... Even though they, they, they justified it, I still think those scenes were probably a little less interesting. But, um, I, I think the satisfaction I got from realizing, like, that was the point of all those scenes, uh, made it all worth it. Like, that was a very satisfying moment for me. Um, so, our next enemies are, uh, Mr. Two and Bon Clay. They said Bon Clay, uh, Sama or something. Um, they all, all I know is they didn't say Miss Bon Clay um, And then they showed Bon Clay's legs and they had like, you know, hairy legs and they had a More masculine voice, but like I think they had like lipstick on or something um, so there's there, there's some uh, What's the word I'm looking for? um they're, they're being, you know, vague about their gender right now. Uh, now, I'm not... Now, look, this is an anime from 
when did this episode come out? <laughs> 2014? No, I know it didn't come out in 2014. Um, this, I mean, this episode would have come out in like the early 2000s or something, right? Um, so I'm, I'm not expecting, I'm not expecting it to be uh necessarily gender positive like if, I, I don't expect it to have uh a great representation of uh of gender within it so i mean it could just be like it could just be uh a dude and the joke is that he looks and acts like a girl it could be a woman and the joke is that um that she is like more masculine um, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe there's no joke as well. That would, that would be the progressive thing, I think. Um, is that the, that, you know, the, the joke is not their gender and the way they choose to present themselves. But, I'm not expecting that much from this show. I think, I think I'm, I don't want to turn my discussions into preaching about, uh, gender roles. I can do that at another time with a media that deserves it more. I think One Piece is fine. Um, but, uh, but yeah, well, we, but I was just, I just found it interesting that they, they called them Bon Clay instead of Miss Bon Clay. And I'm assuming that, uh, bon Clay is the partner to Mr. Two, but I don't know that for sure even. I just know that someone said, Mr. Two, Bon Clay Sama, or whatever. And it's like, and so it sounds like they're, t they're together, they're a, they're a duo, but I don't know that for sure. Um, by the way, that person standing on the water at the end there, like if that was, I don't know if that was Mr. Two or whatever, um, they're standing on the water, right? If that's the devil's fruit power, of their, like, they can, like, stand on the water or, or something, that's unfair. Like, that's bullshit, <laughs> because the whole point of the Devil's Fruit is you get this great power, the trade-off is the sea hates you and you can't swim. If you can stand on bloody water, fuck it. Like, that's, that's bullshit. <laughs> I would, I would be mad at, uh, at whoever created the Devil's Fruit. The Devil, if that's the case. Um... I would come and go like, excuse me, I want my swimming power back. This person over here is walking on water with their power and they, they have no downside. I, I mean, I guess maybe if you like push their head underwater or whatever, they could still drown. I, I don't know what their power is. I just think it was funny that, that they were just standing on the water and the whole point, if this is a devil's fruit power, the whole point of devil's fruit powers is to not be able to do stuff like that. Um, and I loved that they showed Nami being a, an excellent navigator, like a really good one. They've shown that she is a, a navigator and a good one before, but I don't know if we've really gotten like necessarily those many, that many hints that she was like prodigious, like that she was like above and beyond because I, I feel like, cause this is the vibe I got off her character. Like I really love Nami and I will simp for her for days. But I never actually thought her navigation skills were necessarily the standouts. I just thought, oh, she's just someone who knows what they're talking, what she's talking about, you know? Like she's been, she has a lot of knowledge, but the actual like navigation in the field, all that sort of stuff um, is just like, okay. And I think what kind of hurts her case is when they first got into the Grand Line, she sort of took the rules she had learned for, for granted. And because of that, they like temporarily got lost or whatever, because she didn't know that you need to follow the log pose perfectly or whatever. Um, and that's not her fault. She's, she's a good navigator. She was trusting the instincts that she's built up and the instincts say, if your boat's going this way, it's not going to turn around like that without you noticing. But it did because it's the grand line. That's what happens. Um, but I just think, you know, now they're actually showing like she avoided this thing just based off the feel of the wind alone. She was like, I think there's going to be wind that's going to get in the way here. Everyone do this. And then they all did it. And they were all saved from something that could have killed them. So great stuff. Okay, let's move on to the next episode. That was a long discussion for something for a video where I have three... Uh, episodes in so let's just move on to the next one this is going to be episode 79 of one piece here we go okay this is a recap that i might be able to do a rubik's cube in damn it damn it I was actually doing pretty well on the uh, on the cube there, but 
I, again, just had the corners left, basically. The rest was done. <laughs> oh, this is still a bit of recap. I could have, I probably could have finished the cube. Damn it. <laughs> Get off the water. Oh, he looks sad. Maybe he's a good guy. Don't make small talk with a man standing on water. Whoa! Was he standing on a ship? Oh my gosh, it's... It's got a crown? Whoa, this is a cool design for a ship. Wow. The Tin Tyrant. Okay. Why is Vivi in charge? I guess she's the smartest one there. <laughs> Oh my god, they're surrounded. Oh no. <laughs> well, Luffy's not in much danger with guns. Oh my god, look at this dude. The Drum Kingdom. Not, not to the Drum Kingdom, my man. Uh, no. Oh, we'll cook you food, but... Hey! Oh my god! Wapple. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't worry too much. Nice. <laughs> Thank goodness for Usopp's quick reflexes, otherwise he would be dead so many times in the series. Whoa! Nice. Oh my gosh! Okay, so the munch munch fruit, is that what they said? Oh, ho, ho. very nice. I hope that's it for them. I hope they just annihilated this squad. <laughs> yep. That's true. Oh my god. Okay. I'll try to remember you. I've got, I've got the Tin Tyrant written down. But I gotta be honest, I didn't like any of their designs, so I'm okay if they never show up again. <laughs> Have you? I don't know, you tell me. This show is like Dora the Explorer, they expect us to answer the questions for them. Is it this way to Alabaster Kingdom? This way? Several days earlier? Oh, Smoker! Oh, oh, oh! Okay. Maybe I am interested in this. I've already forgotten her name, but I love her. Tashigi! That's her name. <laughs> Careful! Running with a sword? Ah! Oh my god! Okay. I'd say even most of that was indecipherable. Uh -huh. Suspicious swordsman. Oh, Mr. Eleven. Wow. I like this, them having like other agents from Baroque works that are just not used in the Luffy battles. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I kind of liked seeing Smoker and Tashigi and what they're up to. 
I thought we were gonna cut to the villains we just disposed of days earlier, and I was gonna say I didn't care about that. <laughs> I, I don't know. Did does she often laugh at you doing stuff like that? <laughs> Oh, I like Vivi just like sleeping at the foot of her bed. <laughs> it's really cute. Oh, they're all in there, like keeping watch over her. <laughs> Luffy really doesn't know what the hell he's doing. It's cute. A winter island, okay. Based after the elements? Not elements, seasons. Okay. Hmm, that makes sense. Okay, a winter island of some sort. Only if they have a doctor. <laughs> That's pretty crazy looking, wow. But is it gonna be a doctor here? This could just be like deserted. Or just filled with animals. I mean, the last island just had two giants that didn't even live there natively, you know? Oh, okay, there are people here. Hi, we're not here to rob you, we just need a doctor. In fact, we don't generally rob people, <laughs> actually, funnily enough. I mean, fair enough. The Grand Line is full of pirates. Oh my god! Whoa! Did, did they just shoot Vivi? Oh my god! What? That can't be real. But it could be! I don't bloody know! All right. Well, 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 well. Um, so we started the episode with this other pirate squad that just like came aboard. And I kind of love that our crew just like wrecked them and moved on and we didn't think about them again. Like I like that because I think they're showing us like, hey, Luffy and his crew, like they're up here. Just because every time Luffy and his crew have come across uh, other pirates it's been like an even battle that's just because you know where it's a it's a story and we're showing like these powerful enemies coming after them um, the only battles that they've actually wanted to stop and fight are the ones with more powerful enemies but here's an example of another random pirate squad who are on the grand line they're doing their own thing you know they're being pirates um, and they've got good resources I mean they had a lot of people they had a huge ship all that sort of stuff and uh, and look, they get on board uh, the Straw Hats, you know, dumb little ship. There was only four of the Straw Hats there. And uh, Luffy and the gang demolished them. Demolished them. And I really like that. I think that's a great way to just like, you know, you do that in d, &D. If you're a If you're a dungeon master, that's a, a good thing to do for your players. Is like, look, your players have... Uh, got all of this cool stuff and Obviously to keep the tensions high and stuff You're trying to throw these threats at them that are like harder and harder So it's like they're constantly like every time they level up you give them harder threats So the battle stays even the entire way and uh, and you know every battle can be like oh life or death And they have to think ahead and they have to challenge themselves and stuff because it's fun to stay engaged like that but you got to remember that you're your players are the main characters of the story 
And sometimes you got to remind yourself and them and the people of the world that they're in how powerful they are. So it's okay if they come across these enemies who are like down here and they're up here and they just demolish them, like absolutely demolish them. That's okay because suddenly the players remember, oh yeah, we're incredible. Like we're, you know, level 12 characters, you know, we're going to defeat but almost anyone that the average person would come across basically any person that the average person would normally come across We're gonna defeat them. The only reason we're facing threats that are uh, as hard as we are is because we're seeking them out or because we're so powerful those threats are coming to us So I I just like that that the series I mean, you know Maybe those characters will come back with some way or they're setting up for a future thing of course that could very well be the case but if, if that is the case, it this has a dual purpose, and the other purpose is to show purpose. I didn't. I think I dropped the S on that one. The other purpose is to show where Luffy and the gang are right now in terms of power level, because they're telling us like, oh, he's a thirty million bounty, Barry bounty or whatever. Um, but that's just numbers. Like we want to see it happen. So I'm glad they did that. Um, also, I hated that squad. <laughs> I mentioned it, but I didn't like any of the designs. The uh, Wa Wapole. Wapole? Wapole um, was like the leader of them. I didn't like his design. His fruit was the munch munch fruit, whatever. Like, yeah, okay, he can eat He can eat stuff. He's like, there's a guy in MHA that can do that as well, that eats anything and digests it instantly or whatever. Um, uh, but I just, I don't like that kind of power. I don't like their designs. I don't like any of those characters there. Uh, so whatever. I did like that we saw some smoker in Tashigi. Um, I love Tashigi. She's running with a sword. She almost killed herself there as she fell down the stairs and almost skewered herself. But um, but I liked seeing them. They're still on Luffy's trail. I kind of forgot that they were, but they are. And so that's exciting that they're setting up for that. I don't know when that's going to come to fruition. Um, I guess I could guess. Because I think I guessed... I said at some point, I think someone pointed it out, I said, um, like, oh, you know, Kobe might come back in, like, 50 episodes or something, and then it was, it was, like, 52 episodes later or something that he came back. I was pretty spot on with that. When are they gonna come across Smoker? Like, when is Smoker and Luffy gonna, uh, collide? Let's say in... Oh... I don't think it's gonna be too far away. I'm gonna say in... 43 episodes 43 episodes smoker and uh, and Luffy and the gang are all gonna come come together I don't know if that's gonna be like their final battle or if they're gonna separate again and then keep going But that's the next time they're gonna meet I think um, and uh, and wow I mean Vivi was potentially shot. I don't know like here's a difficult thing Will they kill Vivi? I don't know. Because because the thing is, Vivi is not a character that I know. I know that people, like, have tried to, like, for sometimes people don't want me to know about, like, characters that are going to be on the crew and, like, much about them and stuff. And, of course, I don't really want to know that much about them either yet. But I do know about, you know, characters like Nico Robin and characters like Brooke... I'm saying Brooke carefully because I think I've been saying Brooks in the past and someone in the comments corrected me to Brooke. Uh, Brooke, Chopper, um, you know, I, I know about some of these other characters that they that they come across um, and that's, that, you know, stick with them and stuff. So I, I want to, uh, like, and, and I, I want to avoid that stuff sometimes, but also, you know, I know about it and I'm not going to pretend I don't know about it and it's fine, like... These are just that that's that's a minor spoiler for me. That's that's quite minor, especially when it's just stuff that I see around the place. Um but Vivi is not on that list and I don't I never expected Vivi to stick around on on the ship. But the fact that I don't know what happens to her is good because this next episode she very well could be dead, but I don't know if they would do it like that if she were. So I don't think she is. I think they're just trying to get us on a cliffhanger. And trying to get us to come back next week. For me, actually, though, in this video, I'm I'm doing the next video now in this thing, so I'm not even gonna be on a cliffhanger. Um, but uh, but I imagine, you know, maybe she'll be shot and she'll be super hurt. 
And then maybe the island will like feel bad that they shot a girl. Maybe they'll recognize her as Princess Vivi, possibly. I don't know. And they'll take her in uh, with the doctor and then they'll also help Nami. I don't know. I have no idea. But anyway, uh, let's just move on to the next episode and find out the answers to these questions. So uh, we're moving on now to episode 80 of One Piece. Here we go. Oh no, I didn't mix this up. I'm gonna quickly mix it up. Wow, for that recap, they left in the entire, like, Luffy making the island joke. Or oh, not the entire one, I don't think, but most of it. You don't need to recap that joke. Okay, alright. Okay, oh, you're giving me a title. Don't reveal any important information while the title's going on, please. Oh my god. Oh my god. Even if Vivi's okay, Luffy is not happy about that. Oh, she's definitely okay if they keep showing her. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Mm, is that a lie? Or did it hit her in a more painful spot? Oh? Oh! Oh my gosh! Wow! She just said you're not fit to be captain to Luffy. I think that's a very important line. Hmm. Good. Hmm. So Luffy didn't take offense to her saying that. He actually took it as, you know, as a proper point of improvement. A witch? Ooh, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's a, just a regular upstanding bear. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's right. He almost cut off his legs before. I forgot about that. He was doing that exercise with his legs that damaged. Oh, my God. Big horn. Okay. Dalton. Dalton. Seems like a sweet villain so far. They care about each other a lot. It's quite the community they got. I think that was just a woman. Yeah, <laughs> Probably Dalton, yep. <laughs> Captain of the security squad, okay. Yeah, she, she a princess. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Can't even see the mountains because their damn things are in the way. Drum Rockies. Oh, is this Drum Kingdom? あの城が何か人々が魔女と呼ぶこの国唯一の医者。ドクレハ。ドクタークレハが医者としての腕は確かなんだが、少々変わり者のばあさんでね。もう140。ガッダム。処置を施しては報酬にその家の欲しいものを
お前ナミさんに何さすきだいいよ、ボブテッカラ。あかすりにきまったら、ナミさんへのタンは半端じゃねえぞ。でも、ほら、マジはこっちでも。<笑>よろしく、キャプテン。<笑> That's cute. <笑>よろしく、キャプテン。ああ、That's a very nice moment. I like that. おお、おお、おお、ポナミ。ここからのコースにはラパーンがいる。ラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパンラッパ Oh, Dalton's a good guy. I like him. Aww. For certain reasons? I want to know these reasons. Damn. Destroyed. Ah. たった五人の海賊団だった。Five people? Blackbeard? この国を瞬く間に滅ぼした。Oh my god! 五人の海賊に。それまでの国の王政が国民にとって悲惨なものだったからだ。元の国の名はドラム。Drum Kingdom。There we go。王の名はワーポル。ワーポル？最低の国王だ。What? He was the king? What? So that's why that confrontation happened. I still stand by everything I said. Oh no, here come the ReZero rabbits. Oh. Okay, maybe it'll be fine. They're gonna just jump over it or something. Yep. They sure are, they didn't care. <laughs> you know, okay, so the scene is about how they're dodging this, like, just by instinct. But I like hearing them just, like, have a casual conversation, you know? Like, one that doesn't matter at all. It gives us, like, an insight into what their friendship's actually like. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so it's not just the small rabbits. <laughs> I got rid of him. <laughs> yep, you just gave away that you're Princess Vivi. Hmm? Oh. Ah, they just left them. <laughs> Vivi's royal pride. Gorilla, <laughs> <laughs> His name is Chess? Oh my god. Oh! That was cool. Did it just pan over to, to be continued written in snow? That's cool. Well, I don't regret the decision to do three episodes now. I, I might regret it when I'm editing the video because that's really the worst part of doing three episodes in a video. But um, right now I'm not regretting it because that was a good episode to end on, I think, because I got to. As I, as I said, what a. What did I say? I said I wanted to do enough episodes that I could like take a step into the next arc, you know? Like I could sort of 
start to see where it's going. And this is, this was it. I got to, you know, we got an episode of sort of wrapping up the previous arc and setting up some character problems. Then we got an episode of like, them like figuring out those problems and then getting somewhere where they might be able to solve them and now we got it where they're where they need to be to solve it but this place has its own problems i like it i really like it um so uh i i think my favorite part oh there was several parts of this these, this episode that i really liked but i think my favorite part was Vivi telling luffy you're not fit to be captain it wasn't played up as a big moment it was a very, um, it was a very short line, you know, um, and I think it comes from Vivi's, like, you know, Vivi is a, um, is a royal, and she cares a lot about leadership, and in fact, she cares a lot about doing leadership right. Uh, she actually has, like, quite a lot of pride in, in that, uh, in that department of, like, if you're a leader, you have a responsibility to your people. And we, we're seeing that time and time again. I mean, she wants to get back to her people, obviously, but she was talking about this king and, like, how could he abandon his people? And she's saying to Luffy, like, you're the captain of this ship and you're acting recklessly right now, which is putting Nami's life in danger because of your decisions. And I really like that she called Luffy out on that. She didn't call him out in a way of, like, taking him aside and screaming at him or... Um, or, you know, like, insulting him. She wasn't. She was, like, straight up saying, like, Luffy, this is an important moment. You're not, like, from what I've seen, you're not acting like a captain. And I really, really like that. Because Luffy's got quite a ways to go as a captain. Like, realistically. And that's exactly, that's exactly why, you know? Luffy actually does put his friends in danger a lot. He's just also good at getting people out of danger because he's insanely strong. But, um, but he does put his friends in danger a lot. So it's really good to see, uh, to see Vivi saying something like that to him. And him taking it the right way. In, in, he actually, like, backed down. And, you know, followed what Vivi said. And complimented Vivi. And Vivi, like, gave him a smile afterwards and was like, yeah, it worked. Great. Like, she, she wasn't angry at him, necessarily. She was just t telling him. I, I just really love that moment. I think that's such a... Such a nice moment. Um, so, uh, I love Dalton as well. From what we've learned about Dalton, I, I really I really like him. He's a good guy. Uh, perfect way to still... I mean, there were several ways that they showed that he was a good guy. I mean, him taking him there in the first place and giving them all that information and stuff was useful. Him talking to the other villagers and being like, Okay, guys, like, are you all good? You're all good? Okay, you can go back home now. I'll handle it from here. Don't worry about me. Just get home get safe like i i really like that whole aspect of his personality and then when vivian usopp like they were sort of nervous they wanted to watch their friends go into the distance they like didn't want to just be comfy inside while their friends are out in the snow um then dalton was like okay i understand i'm gonna sit here with you and talk to you like i think that's so good so dalton dalton was great as well um see like this is an island like I, I don't know. I, I I don't love snowy environments generally, but I like the people here so far. Or the person, the main person we've met here so far. So I like that much about it. Um, we got Dr. Kureha, who is like a Santa type witch. <laughs> She's a hag. Um, and I mean hag in like the D&D &D sense of the word. Um, I don't know much about hags in like mythology or like... I know that hag has a... Uh, it, like, is just a, a, a term mostly used for, like, oh, that old woman, like, that crazy old woman, that hag, you know, but, um, but I'm using it in the D&D &D sense, where in, from what I know in D&D, &D, because I've, I've, uh, run, where is it, where is it, it's right here, um, I run the Wild Beyond the Witchlight campaign from, for my friends, which is, a, a really, really great D&D &D campaign, um, and within this campaign, there are several hags as, like, some of the villains. Um, and D&D hags, you know, are just sort of, like, witches that use crazy, um, crazy magic. Like, by crazy magic, I mean, like, um, 
like unstable magic, kind of like unorthodox magic. So like, I mean, these are these are some of the hags in in Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Like, you know, that's a little frog hag type thing. I'm I'm covering stuff just because if you do want to play this adventure, I don't want to give you spoilers. Um, but uh, but I mean, genuinely, if someone is running Wild Beyond the Witchlight for you, or you're looking for a D and D uh, adventure to run for people. We had, we've had so much fun with Wild Beyond the Witchlight, and we're almost done. In fact, we're probably like two or three sessions away from finishing it. So like we're at the end of this bloody book, um, and it's a pretty big book. So uh, I, I, when I say I recommend it, I'm, I'm speaking from experience. I love this. Anyway, um, so I know hags in the D and D sense. So I, that's what I'm imagining this woman is, where she is a hag in the fact that she uses like you know crazy weird magic um for some purposes but like how much magic is there in this universe that isn't devil's fruit stuff is there any so does that mean she has a devil's fruit maybe she's got the heel heel fruit or something i don't know like i don't it wouldn't be the heel heel fruit it they they do <sighs> their names are always like wackier than that you know it would be like the i don't know the fix fix fruit the um <laughs> but i don't think she'd be healing people because if she's like truly a hag and doing horrible stuff like i don't think it would just be a straight healing thing so i so i don't know like maybe she doesn't have a devil's fruit maybe or maybe this is a wizard of oz situation and she's not like magical at all i have no idea i have no idea um anyway is there anything else really that i want to talk about um the w wapo being the king i already said in the discussion before um, it's possible that the reasoning for him being there is that there's another reason that they came across him um, But if that was the case then uh, Then there's like two points of this scene being here. So before you <laughs> Jump on me and you're like no actually the reason the scene is there is to set up for the fact that later He comes back as he's the king of the whatever blah blah blah. Yeah, sometimes scenes have multiple reasons I still stand by everything I said um, but we found out his, uh, his assistant dude is named Chess. That actually kind of, like, makes me think, though, like, he's gonna be, he's gonna be coming back, and, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't like, as I said, I didn't like any of the designs of the characters there, so I, I hope if he does come back, it's not gonna be for a long time. Like, I'm more interested in the, uh, Baroque works as villains right now, um, so if, if these guys come back to fight, I don't want it to be like 10 episodes dedicated to fighting them, you know? Like I, I, one episode would be fine for me for, for fighting them and taking them down. But I don't know. That is if we do fight them. And they also mentioned Blackbeard in this episode, which is interesting because that sounds like an important name we got to remember since everyone in the world who knows pirate media knows pirates like Blackbeard, you know? Like that's a classic pirate name. So if you're gonna use that, I think you're gonna use that for an important character, I would think. I don't think you would use that for a, just a one-off character that never comes back. So I feel like Blackbeard, that's a tease for stuff to come. Anyway, um, that is One Piece. That was episodes 78, 79, and 80. So I hope you guys enjoyed the three episode thing. Please, if you did, let me know. Um, and just tell me in the comments a bunch of stuff. I love to read your comments, but thanks for watching. And uh, go to my Patreon if you want full-length, early access, exclusive videos. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.